Thunder E here, and you've been waiting for a video like this. I'm looking at gaming on both the Red Magic 5G and the Black Shark 3 to find out which of these devices that are in the sub, the $600 club, as gaming devices that you should pick up. Now, let's not waste any time and let's do some gaming. All right, so we've got two devices that pack in a lot of punch, right? They're both powered by the Snapdragon 865 processor. They both have, of course, either eight or 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage or 128. You know the drill. Those parts are the same, but what is different with both devices? So let's start off with the Black Shark 3. Now, it comes in multiple colors. You can get in black, silver, or white. It's got, of course, that typical solid gaming look. It's black all around the unit I have, the S logo behind, it does light up. You've got the camera at the very top with three cameras, and you've got also this kind of magnetic connector at the bottom. That allows you to charge uh, your device at 18 watts, so you don't actually have the USB cord on the side. But if you use the USB cord, it charges 66 watts, and it's crazily fast. Basically, in, 50, in 13 minutes, you're getting 52% charge, and in 35 minutes, this thing charges up to 100%, and that's a 4,700 milliamp battery. So that's a lot of power. Now, the display is 6.65 inches, and you have a 90 hertz display, which you can change between 90 and 60 hertz, and its touch sampling rate is 270 hertz. So that is quite interesting. Why the one with 270? We'll have to wait and see. Now let's move over to, of course, the Red Magic 5G. Oh, if I forget, when you look around the device, on the bottom right-hand side, there's a switch that takes you directly into game mode and a ton of game settings, which we'll check out. Now the Red Magic 5G. The Red Magic 5G is a device that also is 6.65 inches in size, comes in three color variants, or actually four, if you will. It's got a black, uh, you've got a red, you've got a multicolor, which is like a red and neon, which is what we have here. And we also have a translucent version, which isn't out yet. Now this device also packs in quite a lot of punch. You've got a display that is 144 Hertz. Yes, the same display resolution that you find on a G-Sync monitor. You can switch between 144, 90 and 60 Hertz. What's cool about it is that when you have it on, a, on 144 Hertz or any of the different display settings, it will show on the left, top left-hand corner of your notification saying it's at 144, so you know where you have it. 240 hertz touch sampling, and the cool thing about this device, it's got built-in trigger touch pads there, so when you're playing shooters, you have that already ready to go. No need for an extra accessory or anything like that to do your gaming. This is a nice idea. Plus, it's also got a built-in fan that rotates at about 20, um, 2100 RPMs to cool your system down. And that's a big thing they're pushing with this device. As I mentioned, pricing is around the same. Triple cameras at the back. It's got a standard uh, lens, got a wide, and also got a macro lens uh, behind. So. Let's get into the nitty gritty of these devices. I also forgot to mention, 4,500 milliamp uh, battery within the Red Magic 5G, and it does support a faster charging at 55 watts, but doesn't come with the unit. You have to buy that separately. So what do we have here, and what games are we checking out? Simple, we're gonna check out PUBG, Call of Duty Mobile, Fortnite, on the three devices, and we'll check out how that software adds to a thing or two to it. So. Without wasting any more time, let's look at just quick gameplay clips on both devices and then we'll jump from there. We've taken the lead.
So the very first thing I will mention between both devices is that they run really well. The cool thing is that both of them have softwares where you can amp up and overclock, if you will, push the processing to max out as much as possible. Now I will say this, uh, both of them played well and visually the Red Magic 5G felt like it looked smoother. It reminded me of playing on a PC, 144 Hertz. That kind of refresh rate was just good to see visually. But I did like the touch sampling of the Black Shark 3 270 is a nice sweet spot. I, I just felt it felt a little better. I don't know whether it's just the display or the touch sampling, but I'm just saying it felt better for me. Though the, Re the Red Magic 5G 240Hz touch sampling was great too as well. So no complaints there. Now, both of them have different pieces of software. Like I mentioned earlier, both devices do have a switch option. So basically, once you press the switch it on, it takes you straight into the game mode. And it's a really nice feature that you can use uh, to basically jump into your gaming session and you are good to go. Now, there are a couple of things here with that um, mode. You can go in and you can check out your private spaces, you can go to your gamer studio. All that is ni nice, well and good. But with the Black Shark, you pull down from the top right-hand corner, it showcases your quick access panel, allows you to uh, master controls, Wi-Fi, anti, anti-touch functionality, game for configuration, which you swipe up from the bottom, allows you to configure, uh, of course, the game to kind of push the CPU if you need to, but also it's got FPS counter. So you have an FPS counter that shows up. It also shows you your battery temperature and it shows you, of course, your CPU frequency. That is really nice and a great feature. And this works out pretty well. Uh, it's a very robust piece of software that allows you to do a lot with this device. You can also go ahead and you know do some screen recording as well. Now with the Red Magic 5G, you have the same functionality where the buttons at the top left-hand corner, once you switch that on, it takes you straight into the game mode, where of course you can see all the games you have, you can turn your cooling fan on and off, and you can also turn your uh, RBG uh, LED strip on and off. Now, when you jump into a game, you also have the ability to swipe from the right hand, right hand side to give you a quick access panel. Now, this panel also adds in a lot of features, a little bit more and also slightly less at the same time. So one of the things is that you, when you swipe up that panel, you have the ability to turn on the fan. You can also switch your refresh rate your display immediately from 144 down to 60. You don't have to go into the settings for that. There's a 4D shock. Um, uh, there's also the anti-touching. Then you've got ability to set macros for external controllers. Uh, you've got aim assist, where you can actually set a aim assist um, uh, crosshairs. If you're into FPS shooters, you get your pro triggers, which I do like, allowing you to remap buttons within the game into the trigger buttons, which you saw me use with Call of Duty and of course PUBG Mobile. That is truly one of the best features on this device. And then you've got enhancements, which allows you to go into what they call different modes like auto, CPU turbo, GPU turbo, or super performance, which just basically maxes out both of them. And also a display setting that gives you quote unquote, the best display for each one. Now, when I said it adds a lot, it does add a lot, similar to what you have with the Black Shark, except it doesn't have an FPS counter. So for me, that's a big bummer. I mean, I can go ahead and see my GPU speeds, my CPU speeds, uh, and my network speeds, but I cannot see, of course, my FPS counter, which is something as gamers we always want to see. But one thing I notice is when you actually overclock it, it really pushes it, the CPU much higher and much faster. Now, gaming, as I said, was pretty solid with both. What about temperatures? They also ran about the same temperatures. I also had the fan with the Red Magic 5G running at its max to cool my system down. And since, of course, this was overclocked, I expected it to really run hard and it still cooled it down to 97 degrees, which is still a little hot, don't get me wrong, but that's the fan in action. But here's the thing, the Black Shark also was at that temperature as well, overclocking it and also just running those games as well. So was there a benefit to having the fan? In this case, I don't see it, but it is nice if you're going for a longer period of time. So this is within an hour of gaming. Now, if you're spending more time, I think that fan will be more beneficial because it's still bringing in cool air, but 
that's something you have to make a choice in and see for yourself. So terms of temperatures, they were around the same for that kind of period of time that I was using to game. And that's something that's quite interesting. Now, when it comes to the other features of this device, they all have cameras. And are they solid cameras? They are. Let's take a quick look at some video segments from the cameras to see what they bring to the table. And we'll talk about some of the photos. So re re three, two, one, go. So recording with the front facing camera of the Black Shark 3 and the Red Magic 5 uh, G. Uh, we just wanted to see what kind of quality we get. Again, gaming phones, we don't really focus on the camera. But I figured this time we'll give you something different. Since we're outdoors on my roof, away from everyone, it's sunny, it's nice, we can walk around, and then we'll see the rare camera. And then we'll just go from there. So what do we get with both the Black Shark 3 and, of course, the Red Magic 5G? Uh, in terms of 4K60 for both of them, and we're going to see how audio is as well with both devices to better stabilization. Remember, these are gaming phones, so we get in something better, are we getting something nice? You can see the clouds in the sky, and uh, you can see how lighting is. One, of course, uh, both of them around the same price range, and uh, yeah. So in terms of video, I was quite impressed with what I saw with video from both devices. Yes, I wasn't expecting crazy stabilization, but 4K 60 from both devices, with the Merit Magic also being able to shoot at 8K, if you actually want that feature, uh, and some good front-facing action, even though it was at 1080p 30. Now, rear photos actually were good, um, especially taking you know portrait shots with both devices, they look solid. I did find out that the Red Magic 5G's portrait just didn't work for me, even though it did work on the Black Shark 3. And when it comes to low light photography, that's where the Xiaomi Black Shark R3 really showcases it. Using those Xiaomi cameras, you can see it quite well. Low light photography actually looked pretty good on this device. I was quite impressed with the photos I got from it. I think overall, when you look at both devices, you're gonna say, you know what, gaming phones have come a long way. In, ter in, ge in terms of just what you get and what you're, you're experiencing. Yes, performance is there. There are a ton of features. And also you've got improved cameras overall. Now, if I were to go ahead and pick one, this is really difficult because I do like having trigger buttons on uh, uh, the gaming phone if I want to actually play shooters. PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile. I play a lot of Call of Duty Mobile, so for me, that's very important. Uh, but the lack of FPS counter is really bummer, but they still got a ton of features in there. And I do like the touch sampling on the Black Shark 3. Plus, the FPS counter is really solid, and it has a better camera. So for me, I would take the Black Shark 3, and I think it has a more rounded approach for a gaming phone that packs in a little performance and power. Now, the last thing I'll mention is battery life. I think both of them handle battery life fantastically. You're gaming, you're gonna game for hours, probably game about six hours or so for both devices, and you will pretty much max it out. Uh, with the Red Magic at 144 hertz, I was able to actually push that much game out of the system. Same thing with the Red Magic at 90 hertz or so. Now, without that, if you ran them at 60 hertz, you'd be fine. Good, solid devices. So tell me what you think. Which of these two devices would you pick up with everything we've mentioned here? Let me know. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below. Otherwise, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.